Christopher Nolan is one of my favourite filmmakers working today, and has been for quite some time. I think it was back in 2008 when I saw The Dark Knight that I really got interested in his work. You know, I saw Batman Begins as teenager just wanting to watch a superhero movie, and I think it was only later after The Dark Knight that I went back to and appreciated how good it was as a superhero movie and as a reboot to the franchise. And obviously I went back to The Prestige, stuff like Insomnia, Memento, and then since then his films Inception, Dunkirk, and Tenet. Unfortunately I haven't seen Interstellar yet, but I plan to watch it soon. Some people will probably say I'm unworthy to be a Nolan fan because I haven't seen the movie. Sorry about that. But anyway, we've seen the news recently that Christopher Nolan has left Warner Brothers and is going to be working with Universal, taking on a very different project to what we're used to seeing him do. Over the last few years he's done the big spectacle movies, Tenet was conceived as a big action movie, you know there's a lot of physical stunts in it, you know, Nolan's very well known for not liking computer generated effects, you know he would put a prefer to shoot in camera and use special effects, visual effects to enhance the image rather than just shoot completely in computer generated images. So to me it's somewhat surprising that his next project is almost going to be a biopic of uh, Oppenheimer who was the scientist behind the nuclear bomb. Though uh, over the last few years Nolan has been able to demand very high budgets for his movie this one's only got a budget of 100 million, but for something on this scale of a biopic and almost a drama, it's out of the ordinary of what he's doing. I mean, Tenet probably had a budget of 200 million, I think. You know, other films like The Dark Knight, uh, Inception, Interstellar all had budgets up to probably 200 million. And you know, they're probably justifiably so. And you know, Nolan leaving Warner Brothers is a big deal. You know, I saw it coming really because he was one of the first filmmakers to sort of speak out about the streaming service, HBO Max. Having the films shown in the cinema and on HBO Max at the same time, you know, sort of degrades the cinema going experience in his eyes and you know, he did speak out against that. And other filmmakers working for Warner Brothers, like Denis Villeneuve, who's doing Dune, has spoken out against that as well. But it appears, you know, Tenet did get a cinema release, and I guess it underperformed, but, you know, Nolan was still able to walk away with probably a decent paycheck, you know, in his contract. But, you know, I feel like he has really been rubbed up the wrong way by Warner Brothers and... You know, it is a shame because, you know, his films by with Warner Brothers have been very good. And, you know, I'm just not sure what I expect with him working with Universal. It does look like he was approached by Netflix to do a movie as well. And, you know, he shot this uh, Oppenheimer script around in order to get funding for it. But he's ultimately chosen to go with Universal in order to get this made. You know, it appears he has asked for certain demands in order to come on board and, well, to, to, for them to produce the movie. And, you know, it looks like he wanted a $100 million budget, he wanted it to be exclusive to cinemas for 60 days, you know, he didn't want any other films released by Universal two or three weeks prior or two to three weeks after the film's release. And this film is getting a 2023 release date. And you know, it was only in 2020 Tenet came out. And you know, he usually takes about two to three years to make his movies. You know, that's not uncommon. And you know, this is sort of a different film we're gonna get. I, you know, there's only early on the speculation. I know it's based on, sort of, the script is based on a book about Oppenheimer, but you know, I don't think it's going to literally adapt it page for page, you know, when you look at how Nolan's adapted Batman to the big screen, you know, it's very different to just like something that Zack Snyder has done, in my opinion. 
And I have seen people joking that, you know, he's got a hundred million dollar budget because, you know, he actually wants to film a real nuclear bomb going off, you know. He said he doesn't like using CGI, so obviously that's not going to happen. But, you know, this is a more sort of grounded character piece, I would imagine, you know. I don't think this is going to have much spectacle to it. So this is something more to in line with like Memento or Insomnia. And I know Insomnia was a remake, but I actually really, really liked Insomnia. I thought it was a great movie. And you know, that was sort of the film that sort of got him the Batman Begins job and sort of launched his career in Hollywood and made him one of the highest in demand directors of our time. And then again, you know, Nolan early on, you know, he actually wanted to direct a Howard Hughes biopic before Batman Begins. You know, after Insomnia, he had been shopping around a Howard Hughes biopic and it went through a few actors. And at one point, Jim Carrey was attached to play Howard Hughes. And the film ultimately got shot, shot down because of the Martin Scorsese movie, The Aviator, which also was a almost a biopic on... Howard Hughes and it's unfortunate because you know I think you know I would have really liked to see what Nolan did with Howard Hughes but you know he's also stated that he's used a lot of that script in the Batman movies you know Batman was a reclusive billionaire and you know especially stuff in the Dark Knight Rises where you see even reference of like Howard Hughes like peeing in mason jars and keeping his ear in and being a recluse, you know, that's highly borrowed from the Howard Hughes script. And then Nolan has also gone on to say that, you know, he don't, doesn't want to speak too much about the project because it is something he would quite like to do one day. So starting off with this Oppenheimer project, you know, there's a good chance that we could get a Howard Hughes biopic afterwards not sure if uh, Jim Carrey will star in the film he's probably too old now for the part he envisioned originally but we'll have to wait and see and Nolan is known to work with some of the same people again and again you know he's coming back with Killian Murphy playing the role of Oppenheimer in this movie and you know he's obviously producing this film with Emma Thomas and Charles Roven and his director of photography is going to be Hoite van Hotema, who's been doing his films since Interstellar, I believe. You know, his original guy was Wally Pfister, but he sort of broke away and became a director on his own. And then sort of Hoite van Hotema came in and sort of took over his as his go-to cinematographer, working on Interstellar. He's worked on Dunkirk and Tenet, I believe and you know now he's working on this Oppenheimer project too. Obviously Ludwig Göransson is re returning as composer having only just composed uh, Tenet for Christopher Nolan and you know Hans Zimmer was his go-to guy for the music but as uh, Hans Zimmer did drop out of Tenet in order to do Dune being such a big fan of the book you know Nolan's gone for a replacement and it appears after Tenet he's quite happy with the work he did and you know he's going to continue working with him and you know it's a shame that maybe Hans Zimmer and Nolan will collaborate again in the future but you know Ludwig Göransson is sort of an up-and-comer you know he's had a lot of high profile projects recently and you know he's even won an Academy Award so you know I'm excited to see what he's going to do with the, the uh, music in this movie and then you know this movie is coming out on July 21st, so in 2023, and so we've got a bit of time yet before this film is released, but, you know, I imagine it will shoot next year, you know, they're still in the early stages of development, you know, only just announcing Killian Murphy as the lead, you know, they'll cast the other actors over the next few months, and, you know, I imagine it will shoot next summer maybe, and then be ready for July the following year. Interestingly though, it, this film is going to be shot in IMAX and you know we got a synopsis saying Oppenheimer is an IMAX shot epic thriller that thrusts audiences into the pulse pounding paradox of enigmatic man who must risk destroying the world in order to save it. I'm kind of surprised that he's going to shoot this all in IMAX and I think like you don't necessarily have to shoot all movies in IMAX but I think Nolan's a big fan of that and you know having the bigger screen and considering he's such a 
big fan of the movie going experience, you know, the big screen, the theatres, you know, why not shoot it on IMAX? There's kind of a point, why would you shoot on IMAX and then the film only go to streaming services? You know, that's kind of pointless. And I think studios know that. And also I think Nolan is aware that, you know, after what's happened in 2019, 2020, and you know, cinema going has dropped because of what's going on in the world. I think he's he knows that you know, streaming is a part of the movie going experience now, if you like, and it's just how things have evolved. So, you know, he said he wants the 60 day exclusivity to the movie, but you know, I can see it coming to streaming services pretty quickly afterwards. You know, maybe not on day 61, but you know, I think they'll give it a longer run in the cinema just to be sort of have good faith with him and you know if they want him to continue working with him at Universal they'll sort of do whatever they can to sort of keep him happy. As I said I was sort of disappointed with Tenet but you know I, I sort of get the epic spectacle that it is and you know I'm happy to see collaboration between Nolan and some of the people he's worked with before especially Killian Murphy I'm a big fan of Killian Murphy and you know, I think he'll do great in this role. And you know, this might get like some Academy Award buzz for 2023, 2024. But we'll have to wait and see how the film pans out. You know, maybe that Nolan could have lost his touch and this will just flop. We don't know, but uh, Christopher Nolan, he could direct anything and I will go see it. You know, I wasn't expecting a film like Dunkirk from him. And you know, I ended up really liking that movie and I'm a big fan of that. So I'll have to wait and see for this film when it comes out in two years time and you know I'll probably cover more information about it as it develops. And of course I reckon Michael Caine will have a role in it, you know, maybe just a small role but you know, I know he's an older man now, he's 86, 87 I think, but you know, he only had a very small role in Tenet and Dunkirk, it'll be nice to see him have a slightly bigger role because he has all sort of been Nolan's good luck charm. So that's it for this video, hope you've enjoyed it. You know, it's my first video of sort of longer form that I've done in quite a while. I've been working on a lot of shorts recently and you know, some have performed very well, some not so much. So, you know, and I'm still growing as a YouTube channel and I'd appreciate your support. You know, if you could subscribe to me, that'd be a big help. Just giving this video a like, um, Commenting what you think about this movie would also be a big help. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm. So that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in